Today, we start off with a problem. Solve for the largest angle of a triangle with sides that measure 8 inches, 10 inches, and 16 inches. Well, the first thing, of course, I would want you to check to see if this is a right triangle. And we've looked at this before, uh, 8 squared, 64, plus 10 squared is the next one, is 100, well, that's 164, right? And 16 squared is going to be 256. So the hypotenuse is larger than the two legs squared. So as you recall, if the hypotenuse is larger than the legs, then this is an obtuse triangle. So the angle opposite the 16 is going to be my largest side, my largest angle, of course, and it's going to be an obtuse triangle. All right. So let's get this all. I have sketched out an obtuse triangle. And instead of going and tackling the problem right away with the numbers, let's just do it for all obtuse triangles, okay? And pretend I've given you all three sides. So the three sides I gave you, we will call them A, B, and C. And the largest angle will be this one right here, the side opposite C. All right? Now, of course, we're going to use trigonometry. But to use trigonometry, I need a right triangle. So I'm going to make a right triangle. What I'm going to do is going to continue this base out. Extend that base. And at the altitude of this vertex, creating a right triangle. As a matter of fact, creating two right triangles. Uh, so I have a triangle. Let's just call this x the length from here to here. And this is y. And so you see one triangle that has x, y, and a. Uh, and another triangle that has y, x, and b as a side. So uh, to relate, relate to make a Now we want to do is make a relationship between the side lengths. We know A, B, and C. I don't really know X and Y, but I do know that right triangle, that X squared plus Y squared is going to give me A squared. Pythagorean theorem. Also, I could say that X plus B, quantity squared, is plus y squared is going to be equal to c squared. And let's remember what I gave you. I gave you a, b, and c. I didn't actually give you x and y. So we're going to have to do something with that. But for now, let's use a little bit of algebra and square this. And I will remind you that x plus b quantity squared is not x squared plus b squared, but rather it would be x squared plus 2xb plus b squared plus y squared equals c squared. Now all I did is expanded the x squared plus b squared. Yes? All right. Now, if I move this commutative property of addition, I can make this x squared plus y squared plus 2xb plus b squared equals c squared. Now, do you notice something here? I have x squared plus y squared. And at the top, I have a relationship of x squared plus y squared. So what I'm going to do is substitute the first equation that says x squared plus y squared equals a squared into this. So that all is equal to a squared plus 2xb plus b squared equals c squared. Now, I have almost done it. I have almost taken care of solving for, well, what have I solved for? I don't know. I, I've got three. I know a, b, and c. And I know that that x right there is how far it come out to the altitude. Okay. 
remember, I'm still looking for the angle. So something's gonna, I, I've got to do something. I've got to get some trig in here or something. All right, so what now I need to do is solve for that x. And that is what I'm going to look at. That's where I'm going to get the angle. Because in my triangle here, that x is if a relationship to that angle. Yes? So that's a theta. So it, to find x, and I remember I know what a is, so I don't care, I don't know what y is, so I'm gonna I'm not pay attention to it. I want a relationship between x and a. So that if I'm if I'm looking at theta, that angle measurement, that would be the adjacent and the hypotenuse, which is the cosine. So the cosine of theta is going to be equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse. Ah, oh, this looks promising. Because if I multiply this, I get a cosine theta is equal to x. So what I'm telling you is if you know that angle measurement, then you can figure out how far it would be out to the altitude, which indeed I don't really need because a cosine theta would help me find that angle measurement. So if I substitute that in right there, a squared plus two a cosine theta b plus b squared equals c squared. Now, all of you right now are probably thinking that's the formula. Well, it kind of is the formula. That's the formula for theta, which is the supplement to the angle that I want. So darn, okay, almost, I'm almost there. So I don't want theta, really. I want the angle next to theta, which is 180 minus theta. And something very, very useful is gonna happen. So I'm gonna use my calculator here. All right, I want you to notice something. If I put the cosine of 50 in, I get this long decimal, 0.6427. If I put the cosine of its supplement, which would be 130, it's negative 0.6427. Oh, interesting. The cosine of 20, another decimal. The cosine of its supplement is 160. The same thing, only a negative. Now, we are. I will explain why this is in future. The important thing is the cosine of theta is equal to the negative cosine of 180 minus theta, or its supplement. So if I change the sign, I get the supplement angle. So if I want to know what the supplement of theta is, all I have to do is change the sign, right? So what I'm going to do is change the sign instead of plus two a cosine theta, if I change it to negative two a cosine, so not theta, now to the interior angle, and of course that is our c, then that will give me my angle that I want. So it's a squared plus two a, oh, excuse me, that's that's a negative. A two a cosine. Now it's not theta anymore. It's c. B plus b squared equals c squared. And of course, I can make that a little prettier by commutative property, and that is my law of cosines. So the law of cosine states that for any triangle with side lengths A, B, and C, and angle C, which is the, the angle opposite side C, 
that c squared, biggest side, is equal to the leg squared, a squared plus b squared, minus two times the two legs, a, b, cosine of that angle. So it's a relationship between the sides and that angle. Yes? So, let's go to the original problem. I have the triangle that has 8 inches, 10 inches, and 16 inches. And I now have a formula that relates them. So the formula is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. See how nicely it rolls off the tongue? Yeah. There's the Pythagorean theorem minus a little bit. Then you start plugging in the things you know. Well, I know it's c squared. So here's this one's going to be my a, this is going to be my b, and this is my c. 16 squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2a b cosine c. Everything's there except for the angle, which is what we wanted in the first place. Now we just have to do a little math. All right. So uh, I put down. Oh, no, I'm good. All right. So 16 squared is equal to 256. 8 squared, 64, plus 100, minus 2 times 8 is 16, times 10 is 160, cosine C. Uh, all right, 256, 164, minus 160, cosine C. At this point, you some of you would mistakenly take 160 from 164. Don't do that. Because this is multiplied, you can't do that. Okay? That's the biggest mistake that you can make. So what you really want to do is take 256 and subtract 164, leaving you with 92 equals 160. Well, excuse me, negative 160, cosine C. And now the cosine C, if I divide both sides by negative 160, now I get my calculator out. And like before, if I know the relationship, all I have to do is use arc cosine or otherwise known as inverse cosine. So I put in the inverse cosine of this relationship, which is 92 divided by negative 160. And it tells me the angle of 125.099. So C is approximately 125 degrees and um, 10 hertz degrees. There you go. All right. Tomorrow we're going to do many more applications of the law of cosines. But I think that that is enough to get you going for tonight. Okay. I explained how I got it. You can go back and look at it uh, and watch your algebra. And then you just apply the formula. That's the law of cosines. So here are our problems. Number one, two problems. One, I've got a 36 inch, a 41 inch, and a 49 degree included angle. I want to know what the opposite side length is. It looks like you could do the law of sines here. However, I didn't give you either one of those angles, and you don't have it. Okay. And number two, I, it's just like the one that I did, except for now that we have 34, 36, 42, and I want the largest angle. Straightforward law of cosines. Okay, good luck.